All right, it is 5.30 p.m. Welcome everyone to another school reorganization team uh, meeting. Uh, like always, I wanna start off by uh, thanking you uh, for being here. Uh, thank, you, thank, thank you for being uh, part of this process. Uh, si hay alguien aquí hoy en día con nosotros que necesita uh, traducción o quiere oír la junta de hoy uh, en español, Uh, por favor, oprime, oprime el, el globo de traducción abajo en la pantalla uh, para que pueda uh, oír y participar en español hoy en día. Um, so, 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 so once again, uh, thank you for being here and thank you for participating and thank you for engaging and thank you for your ideas. I uh, had a fun, um, a fun last couple of days uh, interacting with uh, with you all, a lot of you uh, personally about your ideas and what you have um, brought forward. Um, I wanna take a little bit of time uh, to explain uh, what today uh, is going to look like um, and then also explain uh, our next steps, okay? Uh, so number one, uh, over the course of Um, the last uh, couple of days, uh, there have been a total of six new ideas for model three, okay? Um, I was very uh, clear uh, with everyone that in no way, shape or form could they change the model. The model had to remain intact. Well, what does model three mean? TK sixes, one TK eight, one middle school, one high school. Now in terms of where the TK, TK sixes are or what the TK sixes are or the TK eight, or the middle school or the high school, uh, it's everything is wide open and it's all fair. Uh, but participants were not allowed to say, okay, well model three, I wanna change it back to two high schools or I wanna add three middle schools Uh, that was not allowed because we had already uh, decided on the model. So there are six ideas for model three that keep model three as we had decided and we had agreed upon. For model four, there are four new ideas of what model four might look like. And when I say new ideas, I mean ideas different than what we had originally uh, presented. Uh, tonight, uh, we are going to, I think I was able to reach out to most of you. If I, if I, if I did it, I apologize. And don't worry about it. We, we have an escape clause, if that's what you need. Uh, but we have asked um, the creators of these ideas to walk us through these ideas, right? So this is what I did. I moved this school here because of X, Y, Z. I moved this school down here because of this. Or this. I thought that it'd be better if we can do this school. And so they're just gonna walk us through their plan, their idea. We as a team are going to be excited that there are folks who took the time to present new ideas to us. That doesn't mean that we agree with those ideas, but that means that we applaud, we thank, we, and we're appreciative that people went out of their ways to think about new and fresh ideas. Okay, so we're gonna let them walk us through those ideas. Again, we're showing appreciation for that and we're, lit, we're being good listeners to understand their ideas, not to judge, not to uh, react, 
but just to understand them. And we have, if, if, if we don't run out of time, we have 10 of those ideas tonight. Six for model three, four for model four. And that's the objective of tonight. That's it. To listen and understand these 10 ideas. There might be, uh, depending, because this is live television, uh, there is no script. Uh, this can go so many different ways. And so um, there might be an opportunity uh, for clarification and questions. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that, how that plays out as we go along. That's all we're doing tonight. Let me tell you next steps after this. Tonight, you might have been an author of an idea. You're one of the 10 people or one of the 10 ideas tonight. Maybe you did not author an idea tonight. But no matter if you did or if you did not, between the between the end of this meeting and Sunday night, we are going to accept edits, like pullouts. Like um, I had that idea, but after listening to other ideas, I my idea is no longer. It makes no sense, or whatever that may be. Or again, some something inspired you tonight, and now you have now you have a different idea. So between tonight and Sunday night, this team will be allowed to submit edits, deletes, or a brand new idea that we want considered. Again, just like I was able to have a conversation with a lot of you, that does not mean we are altering the model. The model is done. Congratulations to this team good, bad, or indifferent, you know what? That was our best thinking, and we should be proud of that. Now, the reason we want Sunday night is because we want to get in front of you, of this team, to be able to share all of these ideas or, or the, the, the edits or the deletes in an in a early, timely manner. So you have some time to process what has come through you. I will summarize for you uh, in an email, like, hey, model 3.4, the author of that model um, has decided that after listening to everything, that idea is no longer valid or they don't, they, they, they want to pull that model. Or you know what, after listening, uh, they really like what the other person did. So they've changed it. So now they've swapped these schools you know, whatever that may be, after listening to, to each other's presentations, right? Then when we get to Wednesday, and again, this is live TV, right? So all of this can change. This is just right now what we are thinking. When we get to Wednesday, we will start engaging in a protocol to take these six Model 3s, which could go, which could which could grow, or could decrease depending on what happens between now and Sunday night, and then working on a protocol to start narrowing that down to a model three. Same thing with model four, taking the model fours, four of them that are being presented tonight. Again, that could go to five models or six. That could also go down to two. I do not know what happens between now and Sunday, but the idea is that we get to Wednesday and we start narrowing that model four. At this point in time, up to, up to now, nobody in this room, unless you wanted to, of course, but that's, that's neither here nor there, we are not talking about what is our preferred model, three or four. That is not our task right now. Our task is to understand the model threes and narrow it down, understand the model fours and narrow it down. And then of course we have a lot of work to do after that. 
because before you can decide on if you're going to go with model three or if you're going to go with model four, there's a lot of information that we need to bring forward to you um, to help you kind of really dig in and really understand uh, so you can have, uh, again, a good sense of where, where we are going. This is my final thing before we begin our presentations tonight. I want to just uh, reiterate, um, in phase one, um, call it consensus, call it luck, call it, you know, destiny, whatever that, whatever you want to call it, the team pretty much coalesced around, we don't want model one, we don't want model two, um, coalesced around, these are the two models that we want to talk about, and coalesced around, eventually, these decisions around, around model three. But I want to reiterate that once we get to that point of the final moment, what, whenever that is and however that is, um, this group does not have to be 100% on the same page, right? We're not asking to force your opinion uh, one way or the other. It has to be 100% or nothing. It is perfectly okay to go to the Board of Education and, and share with them the data of this team. Again, if it happens that it's one model that this team champions, then so be it. If the team is split between the models, so be it, right? What we, what we owe to the board as a team, what we owe to them is the correct data to say, this is how the team uh, responded. So I, I lied, there is one more thing. Um, the district had come to you with model, model, uh, uh, a version of model three and a version of model four, right? And then you all went and started working on those models and changing them around and making decisions on, on that. Because we have six model three and four model fours, we are going to step back our initial ideas. We wanna applaud your ideas and say, we're gonna concentrate on the ideas that were created by this team. And so we are going to remove the model threes and the model fours that we initially brought forth. Mission accomplished. We brought forth a product so that you can chew on and you can see what it looks like. And then now you have the ability to create. And so, uh, so when I say that there's six model threes, there really are six model threes because the seventh model, which is the districts, for right now is gonna come off the table. And when I say there are four model fours, you all created four model fours. There is a fifth one, which is the one that we brought forth. But again, we're gonna retract that one and concentrate on the four that you all created, all right? Um, I sent everyone an email um, that has uh, all of these models uh, on, a, on a spreadsheet. I'm gonna be sharing my screen uh, but if it's easier for you to, to do it that way, great. Um, if not, no worries. I'm about to start, I'm about to start uh, sharing my screen right now. Give me one second. Okay, if I did this right, where is it at? Share screen. Um, I think that's right. Do you all see? Um, do you all see my the spreadsheets? Yes. All right. Awesome. Okay. So that being said, um, I am going to go in the order uh, that we receive these. Um, that's all we're doing. We're just going in the order that I received these, these ideas. Um, again, I want to be thankful and appreciative of the people that worked on these. Um, you're just sharing the model. This is how it works. This is what it is. This is why we did what we did. 
you will notice that I took away the three year phase in stuff because that's just noise for right now. We really just want to talk about the models. So with that being said, I think I need to turn it over to Mrs. Fish. Sorry, I wasn't ready. I was printing out your models or them that you sent. So, um, okay, this is my Dalton model. Um, I want to note first that I am not familiar with the programs or the demographic dem demographics of where our students live. So my models are based solely off of the capacity of the schools and the locations of where they are located. So for my models, I noticed that north, uh, I'm sorry, south of the 210 in the models, we were keeping four schools. We were keeping one school in between First Street and Foothill and only one school north of Foothill. So I wanted to adjust that to have Hodge, um, Dalton and Hodge both north of Foothill to make sure that we're taking account all the students who would live north of Sierra Madre and also up in the Rosedale area. Um, keeping one school kind of in the middle, which would be Lee, and then adjusting it to have the three schools uh, south of the 210, which would be Magnolia, Paramount, and Valleydale. Um, and with that model, I changed Dalton to be our TK-8 because Dalton is already a STEM school that having it absorb the TK-8, the seventh and eighth graders, it could allow for them to have a focus on their, um, on their electives. So as part of the will, their teachers would now be specialized in that STEM program where it could help them have something a little bit better than whatever other teachers at another location that aren't specialized in something could be, if, if that makes sense. Um, I think that was it for that model. Awesome. I'm gonna take a pause while she collects her, um, her, her thoughts because uh, Amber actually has a second uh, model three. Um, but I wanna say just for the rest of us that are on doc, um, that's perfect, right? She stated what she did. She stated why she did it. In this case, uh, it was important for her uh, to think about location. So she said two in the north, one in the middle, three in the south. Um, and so that's that's uh, that's a perfect a perfect start, Ms. Fish. Um, was there anything else here, or do I move on to uh, three point two? Three point two. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the second model three. Okay. There it is. So this model is a little bit different and we actually realized that myself and another parent came up with the same model um, and submitted it. So I'm going to share a couple of my notes as to why I did it this way and then we'll let her share her notes as well. So it's keeping with the same idea of having um, two schools in northern uh, North Azusa, one in the middle and three uh, south of the 210 gives us um, Hodge and Dalton being a TK sixes, uh, switching Powell to be in instead of Lee and keeping Paramount and Valley um, south of the 210, but taking out Magnolia and Murray and turning center middle school into a TK eight. This allows for a larger campus that would have a larger cafeteria, uh, locker rooms for the kids who play sports in the seventh and eighth grade, a uh, gym, um, labs for science, and would also, um, sorry, there. I, I do realize that there are additional costs with sending, um, with changing the center middle school into an elementary school because we do have to add in preschools now and section off a section for kindergartners and TK as well. Um, also adding some playground equipment for other kids. So I'm not sure that this would be financially responsible of us if this is if this is the model, but I do feel that having the larger campus um, is beneficial to those seventh and eighth graders that would be part of that TK program. And also because that one, um, campus is so large, that's why I switched out Dalton for Powell to kind of adjust our numbers to be a little higher capacity. And that's all my notes for those. Um, I'll speak on this model as well. Um, 
Although initially I uh, didn't vote for a TK8 in our district, if our district is going to do one, I think it being at a middle school location um, could be a way to make sure that there's um, ample facilities for the older children. Um, I do realize the numbers work out that um, Murray could actually um, also serve as a TK8 with um, Magnolia's um, student body added in. Um, I wanted to add a couple um, caveats to the fact that we are parents. There's a lot we don't know about the programs at different schools, about the facilities of all the different locations. And we are, uh, although we're presenting these models, I'm not saying this is what I'm necessarily going to vote for. I can't wait to hear what other people are going to present um, and the reasons why. Um, there's a couple things that have been brought to my attention about maybe a special ed hub um, at one of these schools, um, district kitchens, th things that we, we, we don't know. Um, also, I will note that our own schools um, of Hodge um, are unaffected by this and that um, I did look at maybe the TK8 being at center, I'm sorry, at Slauson instead and Hodge and Dalton being a feeder school for that. But I, I really felt like um, Dalton with one of its, with its, um, STEM pathway and Powell with its arts pathway that we keep those programs intact. That if it's a school wide, a school site wide program, um, I really didn't feel like that could be moved. Um, some of the other reasons why, um, sorry, I have like a million notes. <laughs> um, the, other, the, the reason why um, Paramount Hodge and Valleydale are also um, not on the list for possible closures are the fact that they are, they have the three largest enrollments, they have the least amount of projected open seats. Um, there's also the dual immersion program at Hodge and Valleydale, although it's not a school wide program. Um, I also want to say that we considered not just um, Capacity, I considered population size of school, capacity of school site, proximity to a prior school closure. Um, knowing that we had recently closed down two elementary schools, um, I didn't think that closing schools nearby, that those, those families have already moved schools from Gladstone and um, Mountain View. Um, and also the distance to a nearby elementary. So, um, the uh, Lee to um, Dalton is only 0.8 miles. Obviously the traverse is true. Dalton to Lee is also within a very um, small radius and um, the distance between, um, sorry, Ellington to Valleydale is 0.6 miles, which is the smallest distance between any of our elementary schools that I I made mad notes trying to figure out all the distances between all the elementary schools. So I apologize if I didn't get that right, but um, I believe that that is one of the closest distances. Um, I know that, that Ellington does um, help us reach a demographic in Covina um, that we would perhaps lose some seats be, because of that. And they also have, um, Ellington also has uh, um, only 30%, 33% projected open seats, which is quite low. Um, and it, it it's not easy to pick any schools, but those are some of the reasons why we um, came up with this model. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Fish and Mrs. Wilson uh, Perkins. Um, very appreciative. Um, okay, uh, we're going to go, we're gonna move on to the third model three. And for that, we're gonna call Mr. Anthony Contreras. Yeah, this is going to be very uh, clicking, quick and clean. Uh, the only thing that came up is when I, when the capacity numbers changed a little bit, and since we were turning out about out at capacity, I just noted it, notated that in the middle school setting with one middle school, the the smallest site would contain the biggest capacity because it would, you know, we would be uh, more on the equilibrium side. But uh, truthfully, uh, when once that number changed. Um, all three sites would now become viable options to, to house there. And we might need to take into consideration other 
other points, but uh, in terms of just straight capacity, it's the site that would uh, maximize out capacity, barring other sir, things. Sir, don't undersell yourself. One other change that you made, um, you also said, hey, if we're gonna, if we're gonna, if we're going to rebrand the new high school, we would have to rebrand. If we're only going to have one middle school, we would need to have a, a new middle school as well and uh, rebrand that as, uh, to stay consistent. So if we're going to have one high school uh, rebranded, we would have one middle school that should also be rebranded. Okay. Those were, uh, those were just my two points for this particular model. Thank you, sir. Welcome. All right, moving on to the fourth Model 3. Uh, we're going to call Mr. Antonio Flores. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> uh, so taking into account uh, uh, comments that were made last week and concerns that were made last week regarding the uh, programs at Dalton and Powell, also the investment that has been done in, with our teachers and training them to be uh, you know, uh, efficient with the programs there. My idea, again, thinking outside the box, as Mr. Ortega said last week, you know, think outside the box, what could we do if we were to rebrand this, was to take Foothill, create that a TK-8, bringing Dalton and Bow Powell to Foothill and creating a magnet STEAM school. So we still have our STEM and we still have our performing arts. And our, and our teaching uh, our teaching cohorts are together. Our student cohorts stay together. Our programs stay together. So our Foothill becomes a magnet steam, uh, magnet mill, uh, Foothill becomes a TK-8 magnet steam school. Then Slauson becomes a traditional 7-8 school. Um, and my thinking was, you know, and again, speaking for Paramount, you know, we have a fledgling STEM club, you know, shout out to Mr. Mr. Hartman for getting that started with us. But, you know, after sixth grade, you know, my kids may still want to continue with STEM. And so now they have an option. They can go to our Magnet STEAM school and continue with the STEM work. Also, again, speaking for Paramount, we do at the end of the year a, a play. And so our kids could get that taste of the performing arts and perhaps they want to continue that. And again, that's an option that now we have a Magnet STEAM school where they can continue with performing arts or they want to do behind the scenes. They want to be graphic. They want to do the graphics or the, the video cameras. And so now Slauson is an option. And another idea was now we have a TK-8 uh, magnet STEAM school option on the east side of our city and a traditional middle school on the west side of our, uh, of our city. So that was my thoughts behind uh, this, uh, this, uh, this model. Thank you, sir. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna move on to our fifth model three. And for that, I'm going to call on Ms. Margie Avison. I believe Meg will be speaking to this one, or Jen. OK, great. Um, so the four of us teachers that are on this committee got together to try to um, share our ideas. And, and so like um, Mrs. Fish and Mrs. Wilkins Perkins kind of you know, worked together, we did the same. And, and then Margie sent it off to you. <laughs> so that's why her name went on it. Um, um, one, I wanna say to Antonio that I, I really like and appreciate your idea of the, of the, the, the kind of bigger TK8 right there and absorbing the, the STEAM school. I think that's great. And I wish I had thought of that for this model. Um, we thought of it for the other one, but not this one. And so I wanna just give you a kudos for that. Um, and everybody's ideas, that's not to everybody, but, um, I wanna share why we left Ellington at TK8 here and that is the history of the school. And I know that some parents had shared that at the board meeting, but our reasoning for putting Ellington back there is because it was originally created to be a TK8 because we were hemorrhaging kids and losing them to Covina. And it was one way for us to capture those kids and keep them there. And then inevitably, a huge percentage of those students then went on to Gladstone instead of leaving and going to Northview. And so we all felt as a group of teachers, knowing this history, that, that closing Ellington in any fashion would really, really affect our ADA. And so we were really looking at it simply from a perspective of keeping our, our, our kids in the community. And you know, also knowing that Ellington is um, located in Covina 
And a lot of the kids from the unincorporated parts of Azusa go to uh, Ellington. <clears throat> like it's just an essential to leave it open. That's why we took it off the, the yellow section and put it back up. So we wanted you to understand our reasoning. And then the reason we moved Lee down again was because of a capacity issue. Um, and we felt like these schools that were potentially looking at, at closing are schools where they can be absorbed by other schools nearby in their entirety almost. Because in order to protect those programs, we all feel as teachers that you're literally going to have to pick them up and put, move them over and put them down. Because otherwise, if you do this gradual transition process, which I know our TRO has taken off, um, so that we're not worrying about that. But if we do do that, you're going to slowly be chopping up the teachers and sending them and the kids to other places. Whereas if you if you literally pick up Dalton and hypothetically speaking, you moved it over to Hodge and you dropped it right there, that whole program, those kids, everything is going to stay intact. So whichever ones we close, I think that that's part of our thinking behind why we looked at these particular schools. Also, I want to say we did look at Lee and bring it down to that part of the list because it's a non-modernized school. And while I really do appreciate Anthony and Antonio's ideas about, um, you, know, um, you know, utilizing Slauson in some way or another, um, again, not, an, um, not a modernized school. And I know we're not talking money now, but that is part of our thinking in the sense of why do we want to invest millions of dollars in, in schools when we already have the certain ones that are modernized and then take those do dollars and put them into a brand new pool at the high school or whatever it is you decide to do. So that is our thinking behind why we made these choices. Thank you. Uh, just to be 100% clear, so that last, the last piece was your rationale on why Foothill is quote unquote the middle school, is that correct? Yes, in this model, yes. Awesome, thank you. All right, thank you. We are at our sixth model um, three. And for this one, we're gonna turn it over to Ms. Kimberly C. So for me, um, mine was kind of like what Amber and Melissa said, more geographical. Um, so I would bring Dalton back so there's more schools on the north end. I would either leave Ellington as a TK6 and, and then make maybe Paramount the TK8 so it's more central geographically to the city and then close Lee and Powell. And that was it. That was it for me. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. So a silent round of applause to our six uh, presenters today. Again, uh, thank you for pushing yourselves, uh, for thinking, you know, how can this Model 3 work best? Uh, again, I want to reiterate, these are your opinions, and opinions can never be wrong. Um, are there eventually, right? We can't have six Model 3s. So eventually we're going to have to start working at chipping away and chipping away and chipping away and chipping away. Uh, but what a great start. And I applaud again your, your, your efforts, your time, uh, your ideas on, on getting us through this. All right. <clears throat> so we are now moving on to model four. Uh, we have four model fours. And so we are going to begin with Miss Yvette Valdez. Hello. Hi. So um, my idea was um, mostly based on location. Um, so I chose Dalton, Hodge, uh, Powell, Magnolia, Murray, Ellington, Slauson. Um, and of course, this is in Gladstone. Um, I chose these schools uh, because of where they are located in the city. Um, I um, wanted to make sure that Ellington Powell um, 
stayed open just because in the area that they're in, they're neighboring um, uh, very closely to other districts, so Glendora and Covina. And I uh, feel that we would lose a lot of students closing those schools. Um, I'm in this meeting as a, or I'm in this uh, committee as a parent, but I also have the opportunity to work for the district. And um, I actually see how many transfers yearly we actually um, get coming in and out of the district. And I think I averaged about 220 uh, transfers out to Covina and Glendora on a yearly basis alone. That's not taking other districts um, into consideration for that number. So that was one of my big concerns was if we close down Powell, um, Dalton, Ellington, uh, Gladstone High School, that not only are we going to lose a lot of our uh, current students, but siblings and um, so on. So um, that's why I chose them. Um, I also chose... I chose Slauson um, as one of the schools. Originally, my thinking was that maybe, hopefully, if there was any way of incorporating back in a TK-8 or a, a middle school, that Slauson would work as that. But if not, that could also work as a school to cover the, an area that um, is kind of empty for those families between Hodge and Ellington. Um, so Slauson could be another TK6 um, to fill the gap in that side of the city. Um, let me see if I'm just looking over my notes. Um, and I think that was it for me. I think those were my main points of why I chose those schools. Thank you, Ms. Valdez. I appreciate it. All right, <clears throat> moving on to 4.2. Um, and that goes to Ms. Margie Abelson. Or Megan Jen. I was gonna say, I'm not Margie, but that's okay. <laughs> I will be today. Um, are you gonna put ours up or? Uh, this is it. There we go. I'll make it a little bit larger. No, it's okay. I was looking at the middle thinking they were all elementaries. I'm sorry. Okay. So this is two high schools and um, two, four, six, seven elementaries. Um, we, we looked at Foothill, knowing that it is a centralized location within the city and it's, it's got the large capacity. And we were looking at the smaller schools um, Dalton, Powell, and we put Lee because Lee is right there. And we thought that we could make Foothill into a STEAM school. And just as we said in the first model, if you literally picked up Powell and picked up Dalton <laughs> and picked up Lee and you moved them over with all of their programs intact, it's going to become a STEAM school. And then you have um, eliminated a school that has not been modernized and two of the smaller schools that have smaller capacity and you've created a much larger elementary, but, but calling it the STEAM school or even a magnet school to a, you know, even further attract other kids wanting to come. And with Dalton, you know, while some parents may not wanna to travel to Foothill, there is capacity and availability at Hodge. And also if there are parents at Powell that didn't wanna move over to Foothill, there is capacity at Magnolia. And then Lee is right next door. So, um, our thinking was proximity, but it was also about trying to keep these programs intact. And our district has invested an inordinate amount of money in the VAPA, the arts programs at Powell, as well as all of the STEM stuff at Dalton. And so creating one school that is STEAM and combining those opportunities in such a huge campus and environment could really help them to thrive. And so that was our thinking as to the elementaries that we chose combining them and putting them all intact on the Foothill campus. So, Thank you. It. Jen or Margie or, or Edna, did you have something to add that I forgot? I'd like to add a couple of things also. Thank you, Meg, and um, you really explained it quite well, but the, uh, the placement of the, the, the STEAM school at Foothill is advantageous for the community in lots of ways. 
And one of them is that um, they both rely heavily on um, support and, and, um, and, and learning with APU. And Foothill is very close to APU. There's a lot of, uh, like, for instance, at Powell, Powell uses their, their ceramics labs. And, and every year, APU comes in and helps them put together an art show. And they have a lot of um, relationships that are depend the programs there at the at the Visual and Performing Arts School and also um, at Dalton rely on those relationships. And so it's good to be near APU so we can continue with that. Um, because Dalton, Lee, and Powell are very close to the Glendora border, and then you think of other, other two schools, Ellington and um, Glendora High School, all being on um, the borders of neighboring schools. Those five schools together, that's, that is, that we, we would really take a huge hit to our enrollment, and we're a little worried about that, but by putting it uh, close to the three schools in the north, that would make it possible to hold on to more kids, which also allows us to um, keep our, our teachers, especially our young ones, as um, the older teachers start to retire. So um, I think that that's it. I think that Meg covered everything else pretty well. Thank you, Meg. All right, thank you. Thank you, Margie, AKA Meg. Uh, moving on to our third model four, we're going to call and bring back Mr. Antonio Flores. Um, Arturo, that wasn't my model. This was not your model? No. I, uh, no, I only had 3.4. You only had model three? Uh, yes, I only did uh, changes to, to model three, but not four. Okay. All right. For, uh, while I figure that one out, I'm going to call then uh, to this model four here. I'm going to call uh, Ms. Diana Ochoa. Good evening, everybody. So um, I am, um, I collaborated with our team, CCA, and also with Yvette Valdez. Um, I too work um, with the district. So my uh, reasonings for the, these uh, schools are because one of location. I wanna make sure our community doesn't have holes and enable our students to get to schools. You know, a lot of our families walk. <clears throat> so I wanna make sure that, you know, there, there's no holes in our community where, you know, a family has to go clear across town just to get their kids to school. Also too, as Yvette mentioned, I'm gonna piggyback on her because with her collaboration on all this um, and talking as a parent too, I am a, a parent here, employee, um, transfers are a big, you know, a big hit. And if we don't keep Ellington and Gladstone on there, we might as well give a bow to Covina and Glendora and say, here you go, take our kids. Um, that's gonna be a huge hit. And we see it all the time. We deal with it every day. Um, and it just, you know, it, it's really hard for us to, to see those transfers go. And then, um, you know, we as, as, as the secretaries and the, and the records technician clerks that, you know, have no say. And um, so again, I brought back Dalton because of the area, just like I know some other people had mentioned, um, keeping, you know, Hodge up there in Dalton in that vicinity, uh, bringing back Ellington because Ellington, you know, all our kids are gonna be, are gonna go to Las Palmas. They're gonna go to Covina. Um, and we see that already happening. So, um, and then um, I brought back Pal because then we have our neighboring, you know, district Glendora and they've taken enough of our kids. So we wanna try to keep as many as we can. Um, the only one that I did have a little change um, uh, different from Yvette's uh, was Paramount. Um, I was kind of seeing the location and more of um, the borders of it where it's at, because I know we don't have Mountain View no more. We have, it's too heavy on that area. We have Ellington, Valleydale and Paramount right now. That's, that's a lot. Um, so by taking Valleydale out, you know, we still have Mount uh, Paramount there. Um, but the main thing is, is trying to make sure these, this is, you know, equipped for our families. We're here to serve our students 
I didn't focus too much on the capacity because I know we can make things work. We've done in the past. Um, and I didn't focus too much on the programs because I know that's gonna be our discussion later on down the line and hoping to keep all that together. Um, and then I kept the two high schools because for me that's history and um, you know, having the two high schools, we don't wanna lose all those kids to, to Northview because we will or Charter Oak, it will happen. Um, so, and then the history behind it, a lot of us have been, you know, born, raised in Azusa, gone to schools in Azusa. <clears throat> so there's a lot of history and pride in, in, in those high schools. So uh, this is why I chose model four to keep those schools and to keep our high schools. Um, and that should be it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ochoa. Um, Ms. Fish, was this yours? Yes, it was. Woo, I figured it out. All right. Had a panic moment there. Sorry, Mr. Flores, for putting you on the spot unnecessarily. So, Ms. Fish, awesome. Walk us through your model four. No problem. Um, my only change was, again, for um, location reasons, keeping uh, two schools north of Foothill, keeping one school in the middle, um, and then we'd have the three schools south of Foothill, um, Dalton and Hodge. Um, I mean that that's honestly really all it was was just it was just moving the schools um i feel like there's a heavy um there was a heavy presence of schools uh south of the 210 and not north of the 210 so it was, it was just an adjustment awesome thank you okay uh, because this is live tv and this is happening live and there is no script uh we're we're building it as we go um First, I want to reiterate what our next steps are, um, and then I want to propose something brand new since it's uh, 617. So now you have heard six different iterations of what Model 3 can be, and you have heard four different iterations of what Model 4 can be. Just tonight, in tonight's presentations, right, we heard, we heard someone say, I wish I would have thought of that. So right now, what our next steps are is between now and Sunday night, you have the sheets. I sent them to you. If you are an author of one of these ideas or you are not an author of one of these ideas, you can now think, oh my gosh, I, I have an idea that I didn't even think about. I want to put this idea forward. Or you're an author and you said, ah, if I would have thought of that, I would have done that. So you're going to change what you originally submitted to me and we saw tonight. Right? So uh, you, are, you are Dr. Seuss. You wrote the cat in the hat. You, today you saw something different and you want to change that, that is perfectly okay. But we're asking you to do that by Sunday night. Ms. Fish? Can I ask a clarifying question on the models? You said we're not supposed to change them. Right. Uh, but I noticed that some of the schools have seven schools and for the elementary or TK6 through TK8 instead of six. Um, our model three is five TK6s and one TK8. So are we okay with adding that additional school in? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that question. And let me, let me, let me pause then and reiterate what the models are. Model four are TK sixes and seven twelves. Um, the amount of TK sixes um, can vary depending on what today. I think you saw some that went less and some that went more. Um, and I think that's going to be okay uh, for model three. The model is TK6s, you must have one TK8, you must have one middle school, and, and then the one high school. Uh, but thank you for that clarifying question. Um, so that'll be our next step. Our next step is to go back to the drawing board if you want to. If you don't want to and you're satisfied and you like what you heard, not, not an issue, not a problem. You're not expected to send me an email or to send me an idea. Uh, that's only if, if you find it in you to do that. 
And if you're an author and you like your idea and, and this is the way you want to keep it, perfect. No issues and no problems whatsoever. I um, have a question from Gabriel. Question from Gabriel. Mr. Fernandez, yes. Wondering about uh, the different types of facilities that the schools are on, like as we consider refining from six to one or two, however, we're going to go through the model three and model four next week. Um, which sites have gyms, which sites have enhanced facilities, so to speak, beyond modernization. So another thing for me as a relative newcomer to the district to understand what our capacity is a different way. Yeah, thank you for that, Mr. Fernandez. And uh, definitely, I mean, that's something that will definitely, you're not, you're, you're not the first person uh, to, to, to say that that might be helpful. And so we'll think about when we send this email to you all in terms of next steps, uh, what, what other pieces of information we might, we might add uh, to, to help and assist. Um, okay, so with that being said, and we do have a little bit of time, here's what we're going to do. We are going to allow people of this team to unmute themselves if they have a clarifying question. Clarifying question. Clarifying question means that the person can either answer it with a yes or a no or a simple response. We're not going to do uh, any probing questions because probing questions would be um, now you're getting to you're getting to to um, wonder kind of push their thinking in in a way that um, might be judgmental. So, hey, that was, you know, like, why did you do that? Don't you know that blah, 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 blah. Um, that would be probing. Uh, a clarifying question is, hey, you said that X, Y, Z, can you help me understand one more time? Or I wasn't sure what you meant by, by this. Perfectly. We, we, we're, we're, tr we're striving to understand and know. So we'll open up for clarifying questions. Um, once that fizzles out, um, then we will conclude our meeting and um, we'll begin uh, our process of getting your input by next Sunday night. So once again, if you have a question, which model is it? And then you may ask the clarifying question. Meg, did you have a question before the questions? I do. Can yes. you take this sc screen down so we can see everybody? Um, because yes. this is a particular model. And then I do have a clarifying question, but I can wait to go till after somebody. Okay, let me. I have a clarifying question too. I, yeah. I'm not sure I know how to ask. I, now that I've seen so many, are we able to like look at menus one at a, or menus, uh, models <laughs> one at a time, and then ask questions while we can kind of see it? I'm I'm fine with that. So we would leave this up. You're saying, and let's start with this. Like for instance, start with this one. Anybody clar clarifying question with this, and then move to the next one? Is that what you're suggesting, Jen? Yeah, or maybe just you know if we can have it so that we can pin it and look at it and then unpin when we want to. But does that work on, I don't know if that works on Zoom, but um, yeah, I, I just feel like I may have clarifying questions. I've seen so many models, I can't remember which one is which. So I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but. When you send so. us, are you gonna send them as model 3.1, model 3.2, you are, okay. okay. And right. then the next process question, I, or clarifying question I have, it relates to what Mrs. Fish said and, um, because I want to make sure I understand, we when we were making the dis, our decisions as to the recommendations. We were under the impression because um, we were under we understood that it was a fixed a fixed number in the sense that okay you're going to have one high school and um, two middle schools and six elementaries right one t, one TK eight and and five uh, TK six, but you're saying then that we can have more than five TK six. That's what you're saying now, right? That's changing. We're not trying to limit. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Yeah, my, my, and, and again, I apologize if this is my misunderstanding, but my, my, my understanding was that the model is TK6, one middle school, one TK8, and one high school. 
Um, and I apologize. I, I was not caught up on how many TK6s. Um, the only numbers that I got caught up on that we decided as a group was for sure one high school, for sure one middle school, for sure one TK8. And then the okay. TK6s would vary. Uh, so for instance, right now on the screen, um, you have, you have, you know, you, you, some of them have different iterations like this one right here. Right. So, so, so yeah, uh, um, I, I would say so again, unless the team disagrees, I, I would say that yes, because the reason it was five is because that was our initial, like that was the district's proposal. Right. And the, and the way we proposed it, like, oh, it works out with five. Um, but, but now there's new information, there's new ideas. And so, so yes. Okay. So then the next piece of my question is as we're going back and doing this, because as we were also formulating our ideas, we were trying to keep capacity in mind. And it's, it's very clear that some of these have different capacity levels, um, much lower, much higher, whatever. And so is there a directive about what we're looking at for the capacity versus just saying the higher the capacity, the better? you know, overall, I mean, match to enrollment versus capacity. Can you give us some direction on that one? Because I thought that we had an understanding and maybe we don't. Yeah. And so first I want to point out I, what I think Meg is saying. So if you look here, uh, and I don't know, again, off the top of my head, who these are, but if you look here on mm -hmm. this model 3.1 uh, for E, you will notice that this model at the, at the TK6 and TK8 level, this model puts us our capacities at 95%. If I go to, just to pick a, this one right here, this model drops the capacity down to 67%. So to answer your question, Meg, is there like a hard nose number? They have to be above 90, they have to be above 80? Uh, no, but we have been saying that we are trying to maximize our, our, uh, our capacity in terms of facilities and in terms of programs. Uh, and I believe um, that the reason that we are doing that is because we don't want to find ourselves after going through this entire process two, three years down the line and saying, uh oh, we're back down to 200 school, you know, schools with 200 kids or three, and now we got to come back. And so I think the board's vision was let's let's have this big plan that's going to carry us through uh, through a through a through a lengthy amount of time, so that we're not having to come back to 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 restart this conversation. Let this amazing team right figure out a way that uh, that they can do that. So so yes, no no magic number. But definitely the, the objective here was to maximize our capacity and maximize our programs. Thank you for that question. And can I ask one more question? I know that Gabriel asked um, questions about facilities. Um, I, I also think it would be helpful um, if we had what the actual number of ADA is in these sites. And let me tell you why, okay? So hypothetically speaking, I heard some great comments from um, different um, uh, members of the, of the committee saying that, well, I chose this school because we wanted to have it in the North and we don't want you know, these kids to go here or, or in the South and we don't want these kids to go there. I'd like to look at it and see, okay, I, I get that I know what the capacity of Hodge is, it's 753 students. Well, if they have 500 kids and Dalton has 200, could it absorb Dalton? I wanna know where, if you could, you could, you can't, you can't. you know. And so that helps to make decisions too in the sense of, what realistically could could be done? Or I heard two different iterations of using Foothill because it's so massive to do something. Well, how many schools could you fit in the Foothill? I mean, <laughs> or for example, center, you know, um, half of Anthony's iteration um, involved having a TK8 somewhere else. Well, then center absolutely could have the capacity to house all the middle school kids. So it's like, but we need, we need to know the actual enrollment so could we have those numbers or is that too hard? No, definitely not too hard. Again, let us think about, in my head right now, that swirling uh, is like a data package. Um, again, we will make sure that that is public when we meet on, on Wednesday, but maybe like a data package, like, a, like a, again, some kind of synopsis 
that might assist in your dreaming and your ideation and your and your vision. Okay, I'm gonna go with Jen's suggestion. I think it's a good one. Um, so I'm gonna leave. Excuse I'm me, boss. Keep... You still have two hand raised, Miss Patricia oh. and Diana. I'm so sorry, Miss Patricia. I, I can't see the thing, so thank you for helping me, Latasha. Uh, Miss Patricia Sanchez. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just want clarification. Don't ask me which model it is. Honestly, <laughs> I, I, there's so many. <laughs> but Miss Patricia. Uh, Patricia yeah. So is this a question for for someone who authored one of the uh, yeah. models? We're gonna get to that right now. We're gonna go through oh, them. Okay. When you see it, you can get to that. So thank you. Okay. Miss Ochoa. No question. Okay. Was it somebody else, uh, Latasha, who had their hands raised? It's Diana. Oh, Miss Rojas. It was the other Diana. <laughs> um, I have a question regarding the just a clarification regarding capacity numbers. Um, and and I could wait until we go to the models if you want. If it's a if it's a if it's a question to a person that that mentioned a model and it's a question about what they did, then yes, you can wait till we get to that model. No, it's not. It's okay, just then, overall. Then go for it. Yeah. Okay. So I, I would just like clarification on um not the process, because I understand the process of how you determined um the capacity for each school based on you had mentioned going to each school site, deducting the six classes. Um, I know you sent an email to us regarding uh, recalculation of Dalton because um, you found an error, but I'm wondering within those, the capacity of each, I guess, classroom, what was that based on? Was it based on a, a total of 35 students per class? Was it half of them were 26 and the other were 35? Like, how did you come up with that number that we see right there on the chart? Does Mara, that make Mara sense? Latasha, Mara Latasha. Yes. Take the first stab at it. Thank you. Thank you, girlfriend. So here we go. So to get the capacity, like we said, we had an outside company. What they do is they take the number of classrooms available divided by the number of grade spans. I'm going to use Dalton because I have it in my head. Dalton has <laughs> 20 classrooms available. They have eight grant grade spans. You take 20 divided by eight, you get the 2.5. That tells you how many classrooms you can allocate to each grade. Then you take the district's class size for that grade. So we have, is it 24, you guys? 24 for TK? Don't kill me. What, what's 26. the number? 26, thank you. You take 26 times 2.5, you get the 65. And you do that for each grade span and that total you add all together. That's how you get the capacity at a school. When you subtract in a classroom, you take the average class size, which is 33 because you don't know what grade span you're subtracting. Mm -hmm. So you take the number of classes that you're trying to subtract times 33, and then that's what you subtract from the first number you calculated. Latasha, can I, can I clarify about that then? So yes. that 20 classes at Dalton, is that after the six that are being saved? No, Dalton, after the six that are being saved, Dalton actually has 17 classrooms. But to start, what we did is we went from the 20 that was available from Decision Insight, used their capacity, we subtracted. So in Dalton case, three was already subtracted. So I only had to subtract three more classes, which is where we found the error. We subtracted six classes and they already had three, I mean, three taken out from Decision Insight. So we realized we really were short in Dalton, three additional classes. And it wasn't just Dalton, we did it across the board. So that's why you notice everyone's capacity changed. It wasn't just one school site. And so what we did is we said, okay, if Decision Insight already took away three, our goal was to get six, we took away three more. And that's how you get Dalton's new capacity. And that's the same for everybody. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Natasha, for that clarification. You're welcome. All right. Awesome. So in the, in the few minutes that we have, we're going to start with three. Can I, can I, I can't figure out how to raise my hand, but can I just, it's not a clarifying question. No, go um, for it. I just want to thank, I just want to thank those that brought up Ellington. I had a lot of parents come to me very concerned just about, they were asking me if I knew the history of Ellington. And I was like, I've been at Ellington forever. Just to reiterate, Ellington was created as a K-8 
simply because we were losing a huge number of Ellington students to Las Palmas. The parents didn't feel comfortable having their students walk to center versus walking to Las Palmas. Um, so it was created to help keep those students in our district. And we've kept quite a few of those students in our district, gratefully, because we were able to have the K-8. So just throwing that out there just as a, a good panelist, a good member of the, the committee. Thank you. All right, here's, thank you. Here's a 3.1. Does anybody have any clarifying questions for this author? Edna has her hand raised, but Edna, is it for this model? Oh, never mind. she took it down, sorry. Okay. Really quick, I cannot remember whose models are who. So this is fish. Yeah, okay, thank you, because, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll thank you. I'll say it. I'll say it when we get to to those. So thank you. Any questions for Mrs. Fish on this model? Again, this is an understanding. This is not I like or I dislike. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So, Mrs. Fish, um, your um, your reasoning, as I recall, for this model is you were thinking about um, proximity of one from one school site to the next. So it was kind of um equally distributed around the district is that right correct okay thank you all right i'm going to move to the next one this is also mrs fish and mrs wilson perkins uh any questions clarifying questions on this one Okay, uh, this next. I'm sorry, I, I do. I'm, yes. I'm Mrs. Oh, Fitch and Mrs. Perkins, I, I have a question. Um, and this is um, looking at your TK-8 at Central Middle School. And this is where it would help knowing um, the actual like ADA of the sites. Um, I, I, I'm looking that Murray here is, is you know, being suggested to take off and you know how close that proximity is from Murray to center and Murray's capacity is almost the same as center. So if Murray became the TK8, I, I'm wanting to know why you chose center to be the TK8 instead of Murray, for example. Absolutely. So I, I think although Murray could absorb Magnolia students that if, if center was chosen and it was an in-between location that A, Magnolia would have less distance to travel and B, personally from what I've heard about the TK in the district, we haven't done it to the standard that we need to, to offer that to parents. Um, instead of middle school, there needs to be, maybe instead of the wheel, like everyone sort of talked about, like a magnet, something um, that gets those um, sixth, seventh graders, um, more um, more facilities, more opportunities. So although Murray could absolutely accommodate it, this, this was purely out of not knowing the difference between those two locations and thinking that a middle school may offer um, a bigger cafeteria, a bigger campus in order to make a really exciting TK-8, um, preferably with a pathway or magnet for our district. Thank you. All right, um, moving on to, I've lost my script guys, so I apologize, 3.3. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head who this was. Mr. Contreras. Okay, Mr. Contreras, any questions around, thank you. Any questions around 3.3? Uh, Okay, moving on to 3.4. Uh, this is Mr. Antonio Flores. Any questions for Mr. Flores? I have one for Mr. Flores. Um, Go for it. 
I, I'm, I'm understanding um, why you um, put the TK through eight at Foothill. That makes sense to me. I can't see you, Mr. Flores, either. So I don't know if you're talking. Or I'm here. Oh, yay. Thank okay. for the question. <laughs> um, but why, I understand Dalton and Powell. I, I get it. But I don't understand Ellington. What was your thinking of choosing Ellington to take off the list versus another school that could have been closer by, even if it was like Magnolia or Lee or something that was in closer proximity? What was your thinking? That Valleydale could absorb them? Or, I mean, what was it that you was kind of your reasoning? Sorry. Um, I mean, it could be that Valleydale could absorb the students. But again, you know, I, I'm not... Uh, completely attached to the schools here. I mean, if you wanted to switch out Ellington with Foothill, if that worked out, that would be fine with that as well. Uh, but that was just my my thinking of putting Foothill there and then adding Slauson as the other middle school. Can I also ask you too, um, your, um, why you would have it be Slauson instead of Center? And I, and the reason I'm asking, and I'm not trying to be, it's not loaded. And no, by no. The way, I love your, I love your plan here. It's great. It's so, but modernized versus not modernized. What was your thinking capacity or. So was I was actually thinking you, uh, Azusa as the center line. So we would have a TK eight option on the east side of Azusa and then Slauson being on the west side of Azusa of, you know, Azusa Avenue. So you had an option of, uh, you know, TK eight on the east and Slauson um, on the west. Are you left-handed? Everybody else thought north and south, and you thought east and west. I'm a lefty too, so that's, my, that, that's what it is. Yeah, east and west. There you go. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, moving on to 3.5. Uh, this is uh, any questions uh, uh, around 3.5. Do we know who uh, presented yeah. this one? I'm sorry. Yes, this is this. These questions would be for Meg. Okay, so I have one, Meg. Um, in regard to it, you had mentioned about uh, Dalton being relocated over to Hodge. Uh, question uh, for clarification: um, At the size that Hodge is at, and the capacity of their auditorium and everything else that's there, um, how do you imagine? the fulfilling that capacity with Dalton students? I, I, I don't, um, and so let me clarify. It is our, it would be our intention that Dalton would literally get lifted up and programs go with it and be put with Foothill along with Powell and Lee to create the STEAM school, magnet okay. school, to keep the programs and the people, the teachers that have been trained intact so that kids that, started there younger, can continue along the progression of their STEM learning, all that kind of stuff. Right. What my That's comment right. was is that if, if there are kids whose parents don't want them to go down to Foothill, Hodge actually has the capacity to absorb some of those students from Dalton who would not want to go with the program. Ms. Avella. Yes. I, I believe that you were responding to your model four and the one that's up right now is the model three. Oh yeah, because I don't know how to read. <laughs> um, either way, actually, I do believe that with your um, ADA that you have right now, that Hodge can absorb most of those kids. Okay, so, and then just the that's second why I asked one. For the numbers. That's why okay. I asked for them specifically. And then also a clarification is um, you talked about funding on remodeling. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and I don't know if it would be you to answer it or if it would be um, the cabinet um, funding. It is, isn't that money already set aside through the um, modernization funding that can be utilized for that? So it wouldn't directly affect the district's main budget as a loss, I guess you can say, or a hit. Are you talking about like, for example, modernizing Slauson instead of something else? Is that what yeah, you mean? Because you had okay. made a comment in regard to why remodel a school that we we could put in, in another school that's already- It is bond money. It, it, you're right, it is bond money, mm -hmm. but you have bond money that supposedly is slated to 
modernize all of Lee, modernize Paramount, modernize Slauson. And my comment was- Also okay. Dalton. <laughs> I thought that Dalton had already been modernized. No, we're just in the same boat as the other schools you mentioned. Okay, and so I didn't, I didn't know that, but honestly, it doesn't affect what I was thinking anyway, yeah. actually even better. Because then what you could do is instead of taking all that money and putting it into Dalton, take and make everything even better, say at Foothill that's already okay. been modernized and has two computer labs and all of these other facilities. And so just take what was slated for this and make it this even better, like even the high schools, you know, all the things that we want to do. And I know they're doing a great job with, with how they're managing that money. That's not the comment I'm making. It's just, it's about choices. You know, okay, thank you. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So just to clarify, uh, Meg, because you did mention um, a couple of times that Lee is not a modernized school. So that's why you had it as a, on the list of, of closing, even though it has a capacity of 606. Um, you do realize there are other schools on the uh, other list to keep that are not modernized, right? I do, I do. just Paramount, correct, on this particular list. Valleydale, Murray, Magnolia, Hodge, and Ellington have all been modernized. So it's only Paramount that we have kept on the list. Anyway, that was just a piece of our thought process. It was not the determining factor. So, I mean, the only determining factor. All right, moving on to- Can I ask a clarifying question as well? Yes, ma'am. Um, when you guys looked at your schools, I noticed that you only have one school north of the 210 and the, all the other ones are south of the 210. Did you put into consideration some of those students who may be kind of more in the center um, that now they'd have to travel farther north to the, to the only one school or south of the 210 to get to school? You're, you're muted. <laughs> I think the one school that would affect most is Lee because um, Powell is, is close to Magnolia and Dalton is close to Hodge. And so really Lee is the one issue school where if you're not going to make say Foothill into a mega school or something like that, that isn't going to be an issue for Lee proximity. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So. All right. Moving on to number six and i apologize i did not again i lost my script here so if someone can help me out who this whose model this is this is mine kimberly c okay kim so thank you so uh any questions for this model for miss c All right, moving on to our first model four. Uh, this was Ms. Valdez's model. Any questions, clarifying questions for Ms. Valdez? Was your, your model based on the data you see as you process the transfer requests out of the district based on schools of origin for those transfer requests? Yes, that was a big part of the reason why I chose the, the, um, these schools. I actually um, gathered the data that was just recently submitted to the um, to Kevin and to the board from our office for the last five years. And that's where I, um, so I took all the little charts for the last five years and I went through them. And so that's the reason um, I chose those schools. But between that um, and also just mapping out, like, I don't know if you guys can see it, but different schools from different districts that are surrounding our district and just mapped out where they were at. That was another factor. Um, and yeah, just location, uh, where they were at, how far away they were from uh, other schools within our district. But yeah, transfers and location were the two big ones. Ms. Melissa's hand raise. 
sorry, my, mine was a similar question. Um, I keep coming to this again and again, the Valleydale and Ellington being so close, um, 0.6 miles um, apart and Valleydale being a bigger school, a, a bigger capacity school and a larger enrollment school um, that it, it seems like people keep going back to the um, keeping Ellington at, because it's um, in Covina and it keeps those Covina kids. And I took that into consideration too. Um, the reason why I just kept going back to Ellington is just because if um, we can always add portables, they did that for the, the middle school portion of it and it worked out great um, on that school. So if we needed to increase the capacity and possibly portables or um, construction is available, then the capacity wouldn't be so important then because we could put, you know, drop a couple portables in um, the school sites that I need more um, capacity. And so that's why I kept going back to Ellington versus um, Valleydale. Okay, moving on to the second model four. Uh, this was uh, Meg Savon. I hate to say this. Um, I just want um, clarification on modernization because I literally am I'm being text like bombarded um, is just to make clarification on the modernization part that we spoke of early. And it's kind of also been brought into this as well. Uh, some of the language was brought up uh, or about uh, modernizing. Um, what phases are we at at the schools that are on the list currently for modern that are in the middle of modernization? Um, can we have some clarification on that? Yes, so right now we have paused on any construction that has not started. So that way we are not starting a project until this process has been completed. So everything that was in the works, I think all of our projects that are there, they're like 10%. Um, we have projects like Fort Dalton, um, Paramount, where we submit plans to DSA, but there's no construction whatsoever taking place until we finish this process. So, but the phases themselves, and I apologize, my dog, um, like I know from our site, we're on the last phase, phase three. Uh, do we have other schools that are at phase three? Are they at phase one? Are they at phase two? Because that also, with the comment that Meg had made, you know, I think we should let the public know also, and also our committee know where we're at, because if we do have a school that's just about done or a school that's just the beginning, it may also affect the committee. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk on, on that one just a little bit. Um, so to double down on, on what, what Ms. Jamal said right now, um, we took the approach to pause everything right now um, until we figured out what was happening with school reorganization. Uh, number two, uh, in terms of the phases, um, those phases were based on the assumption that we had all these schools, right? So you have a set amount of money and you say, okay, based on this money and based on the number of schools that we have, this is what we're going to be able to do, right? Roofs, underground, classrooms, right? That kind of like that, that mentality that we've been in, uh, which still might, might hold true. So we can definitely go back backwards and say, this is where all the schools are at. But moving forward, we cannot because, again, the trajectory and what can be done with the remaining funds that we have uh, can be altered severely uh, based on the model that we land on and the number of schools that we land on. So we can definitely go backwards and say, OK, this is what has been done. But 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 moving forward, um, we, we cannot because moving forward would still be under the old assumption that we have all of these schools and this, and we're gonna continue with the plans that we currently had. Make sense? Okay, awesome. All right, moving on to 4.3. I, I have a quick clarifying question for Meg's plan. What schools was it that she talked about picking up and moving to Foothill? I can't remember. 
You're on mute, Meg, but I can answer that for you because I, I wrote it down. You go right ahead, friend, because I was right about to break the rule and have to pay a dollar in the jar. So go ahead. I think you said that uh, it would be picking up Lee, Dalton, and Powell. Yes. And, that, and then that because Dalton is um, STEM, emphasis on STEM, Powell's emphasis on the arts, uh, that Foothill then would become a STEAM school. Okay, and so all Lee, of those and Lee is stuff. right, and Lee is right there, which solves that problem that Diana was right about in the other model, whereby, you know, they don't ha they are in the center of the city, and so for them to be, you know, pushed to four corners of the wind is very far for those families to travel. That is very accurate. So, Ms. Wilson, perfect. Okay, so Lee had the STEM program, Powell had the arts program, and what was what was Dalton's? Dalton is the STEM program. Oh, Dalton's the STEM. Okay. Yeah. All right, perfect. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, I, I, um, I mean, I'm I'm a little bit biased as a Hodge parent, thinking you know Dalton's going to close. We're the only two schools up here. We I just did the numbers. We can only absorb half of their um, projected enrollment for the following school year. So at least half of the school would have to select to go somewhere else. We I'm don't also, have their projected enrollment numbers. We only have their, the- uh, We do on the slides that we got at the beginning of the oh, process. Okay. okay. Um, so their, the projected is um, um, three, 329 for Dalton, 585 for the 2022-2023 school year for Hodge, um, leaving us at 915 Hodge's capacity, although it feels very full already. Um, the capacity apparently is 753, um, so we, we could maybe take half of Dalton. Um, I'm also nervous that that up, um, that this area is also that there there's a growing number of homes and um, that it's a, a growing neighborhood, and that if we close, say Dalton, that that there would be families that would maybe not use our school district who are maybe moving into Rosedale and things because um, there would. There Our be thinking because of the investment that the district has made into the programs in Dalton is really that those kids are going to go, they're going to pick them up and go put them on foothill. I think that the teachers are very invested um, after having been trained in all of the STEM activities. I think the parents are invested. And so I don't, I would be very surprised if, this is my opinion, and I taught at Hodge, so, and I love the school and I, I believe me, but I just think that, um, it wouldn't be absorbing the entire school. I think, and I agree. I think um, Dalton is a, a destination school with its program that that families come to use it. And I, um, I hadn't thought of moving the entire program. I just knew that um, you know dispersing it at all would be very disruptive to the program. But I, I do like what what you guys have put together with that the entire program moves. I'm just nervous about um, it moving so far south. All right, we have a couple more minutes. I think we can pull this off. Questions for Ms. Fish. Moving on to 4.4, .4, questions for Mrs. Ochoa. Can I ask another clarifying question just in general? Because I'm not familiar with Ellington, but listening to what Ms. Jones said about um, Ellington being um, a school that we lose kids, we were losing kids to Covina, so Ellington was created to help with that loss of kids. She mentioned that they go to a different school. Is that school a middle school that, that you said that they're yes. going to? So it's the seventh and eighth graders at Ellington that we're losing. Sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Six, okay, so sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. So kind of in my head, what I'm thinking is having that TK-8 there is what's keeping them there. So changing that into right. a TK-6, which is what's proposed in a lot of these models, doesn't really solve that issue. Actually, there's a uh, uh, Mark Ellen Elementary School right next to Las Palmas. So right next to Las Palmas, there's another elementary school. So it's not only middle school, it's also elementary because literally there's, I think there's, um, there's Lark Allen. There's Lark Allen, there's Grove Center, there's, yes, there's a Grove whole bunch. Center. Yeah. Oh, here it is. 
There's Lark Allen, Las Palmas, Grove the Lark Center. Allen's closed. I was going to say, I think Lark Allen is closed. Oh. Yeah, Lark Allen's closed. Oh, yeah. Manzanita's right behind it. So, yeah, Lark Allen is the one I had it crossed off. That one's the one that's closed, but we have Grove Center, too, and Manzanita's right next, next to it. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you did it. Um, number one, again, if we can just have a quick silent applause for all of our authors tonight. Um, what they did takes time, uh, takes brain power uh, to put your ideas out there. And so we are super appreciative how lucky we are to have 10 different models, six for model three and six for model four to, to wrestle with to digest, to chew on, to ponder, to think, to wonder, to imagine, to dream. And so we thank all of you who took the time to really think about this. You will get an email uh, from me um, saying, um, here's what it is. Everyone has these models already. I emailed them to you. Um, again, if you are an author of one of these 10 ideas today, you have the ability <laughs> to say, oops, I changed my mind. Um, I, after listening tonight, I wanna edit my, my model. Perfect, it's your model, you can edit it. If after tonight you say, hey, after listening to everything, I wanna pull my model, again, you authored it, that is your choice and your decision. Or if you authored something today and said, I'm good. I like what I what we came up what I came up with what we came up with and it's going to move forward that way. Great. And then lastly, if you did not author something, but tonight you feel inspired or you see something and you want to throw a model out there, you are also allowed to do that. Again, I want to reiterate it will be in the email. Uh, this time there is a deadline and that deadline is Sunday night. Uh, that is not to add pressure. That is just to add transparency to this team. So you, uh, more quickly ahead of time, uh, you get to see uh, what your teammates are doing. So again, thank you so much. We know this is not easy, but we appreciate what you do. Have a wonderful evening and we will see you, if not sooner, next week. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you.